pockets. I have a few. They don't all fit on this table, so I decided to start with the ones that are a little bit longer in my collection than my more recent ones. And I thought I'd just talk you through, introduce you to some of the slippers. Because I have a species here, which actually is a unique form, comes with its own characteristics. And um, as far as I remember, the label was Christmas and the cultivar was reindeer. And when you get slippers, normally you get like two. There should be a growth, maybe an old growth and a new growth coming. And they should be joined together. But in this case, they were separate. So have to be a little bit careful with them. And just watch that they don't you know, slip away or that you lose one. Usually it's advisable that you pot them up together so that at least you have the same species in one pot and don't separate them and then, because sometimes the foliage can look so similar that you can easily confuse them with something else. So tag the orchids. This is Christmas with the cultivar reindeer. And here I have a hybrid and um, I know that it's Christmas, but I think, I'm not entirely sure, I think the cultivar name is Sock. So um, these are also separate, so one has to be careful, again, that you don't confuse them. Um, they're pretty easy to identify in this case because their patterning is so very similar. So it shouldn't be a problem, but just to be safe, best to pot them up in the same pot and then get a label in there. I personalize my labels. I haven't gotten around to it yet, so uh, yeah. But they'll, they'll, I'll take care of it shortly. And uh, with this hybrid, I believe this is one of the ones that the Christmas reindeer was crossed with in order to get this. So, um, this is brand new and they are joined, which is awesome. That makes life much easier. You can't lose them. And um, when I put it in the pot, I still had them joined at the rhizome as well, which is fantastic because then they can draw strength one from the other, especially when it comes to the root production. So for me, this is a no ID but I do believe it has some kind of uh, semblance to a giraffe, which is actually awesome. I also have a novelty phalaenopsis called giraffe. So now I have a slipper sock called, I'm gonna just call it giraffe, but uh, this is how you want to get them together. It makes potting up easy and they can draw strength one from the other. And here is another one it's just one of those big hybrids that, you know, the commercial hybrids you get in the shops and you don't have to, you know, think too much about their cultivation, where they come from, because they're so hybridized, you know, like the phalaenopsis that you get. They're big, they're blousy and um, the leaves and everything, they, you know, you can't miss them. Uh, they're easy, easy to grow because all the intricacies and the finicky attributes they may have in their own environment, they've all been bred out. So after a while of having these in the pot together, they actually joined at the bottom, which is amazing because the roots tangled up with each other. So this makes repotting so much easier. And then you don't have to worry about losing them or putting them in a separate pot and they how, taking up too much space. So yeah, just a quick introduction to my slipper collection and I'll move on and get the other ones out. Okay, the table is set. Welcome everybody back to a little introduction of my slipper orchids. Thank you so much. If you saw the introduction, um, to the other slippers that I have, I just wanted to mention, I checked the label of the giraffe um, slippers. I believe that is a hybrid. 
and although the main name is actually erased sort of rubbed out I couldn't quite see it but I could see very clearly that the variety is sock so I'll just put up a picture as a reminder of that uh, slipper so because I was a little bit unsure so thank you very much for being here I have made a spread on our table on the east side of the house because I wanted to show you as I flush my other slippers these are the ones I have a little bit older in my collection and just you know have a little chit chat with you now I don't know all these off by heart but this one let's have a look it's Parfupedalum Redshift crossed with Parfupedalum Mordier. I do not have many pictures of my slippers because not many of them have bloomed yet. This one is Gloria Norgel or Naugel. Parfupedalum Gloria Naugel. Here's my little Spicerianum. I love this little guy. I wish I could have bought a bigger one but you get what they choose for you when you order online. This is Parfupedalum Mint Chocolate. Really looking forward to seeing this one bloom. It's supposed to be sort of a chartreuse color with dark chocolate markings, etc. Here is Bellatrum XL. Doesn't look like an XL, but we shall keep the faith. Then I have over here, hang on a second. This is a long name. I'm going to get the tag out. This is Hong Sheng Bei crossed with Yin Sing Makassar crossed with Yin Sing West. So there's that one. And how about can I entice you? Seeing as I've spread the table, can I entice you to a little puff your pendulum? Delanati or Delanati I. And here I have Iona, the Pedalum Iona. So all these are actually bought by, from Orchid Garden in Poland. Hello to Orchid Garden here on YouTube. I feel like I always have to say that because, you know, Orchid Garden, right? So all these mottled leaved ones were bought from Orchid Garden in Poland. This one was my first one. Oh, you're heavy. And this one is, I don't know what it is. It came from a garden center. I saw it and I started to practice with it because I wanted to start with the slippers and Ed was helping so much on his videos to what I need to look out for. So I bought this one based on his instructions as I was watching his videos. And then the big one in the back here, I'm gonna bring it forward. Oh, this is Fragmopedium Garen Weaver. And yes, I know it blocks the view from everybody else, but we'll get around to it. And maybe you've seen my repot video. Since then, it has had no fertilizer. It is now seven months without fertilizing, just flushing it, flushing it, flushing it to ensure that the new leaves, the new growths come out cleaner. So my assumption on this one was because I'm here in southern Spain, it's going to grow faster. It's going to need more fertilizer. Well, I was wrong, clearly, as you can tell. So I have not been fertilizing for a long time beautiful breezy day and we are going to do some flushing. I'm going to empty out all the reservoirs of all the pots because they're going to get fresh and new. The fertilizer I mixed up today for these guys just to not get ahead of myself is at 100 parts per million with MSU fertilizer a touch of seaweed, like one tablespoon, American tablespoon of seaweed. And I brought it down to 5.8 because my leka is probably still not recovered from having been soaked, even though it's been over a year that they have sat in this medium. So I bring it down. 
And all I do is throw water in the pot until I see it reaching the top of the container. I am flushing with plain RO water. It's not pH down. This is just to get, there you see the water coming out of the top of the surface, and then I stop and I let it drain. Sorry, little spider. You've got your home back right now. I keep flooding these little guys. But they'll come back. I like my spiders. I am going to leave it one more month for the Phragmopedium without fertilizer. So the reason I'm not pH downing my, my flushing water is because it just runs through the pots. That's all that it, it's supposed to do. I just flush as is. I will not let that water stay too long in the Phragmopedium simply because of the difference in pH. So after this video, it will get a proper pH down solution so that the reservoir isn't too high. So this was the redshift that I've just done. Then I take the reservoir and I fill it up. You see where the mark is in there? That's where I fill it up to with my fertilized water. Comme ça. And then in she goes and you're all set. Here is Iona, gorgeous blooms on Iona. I love this one. And you know what's so fun about flushing? Especially in the summer, you can mess with water lots. So you see on that leaf, I sunburned Iona for a little bit. She did not appreciate that. But the other ones are fine. And she's got several fans, one, two, three that are absolutely clear and the fourth one is down underneath there. Four fans and the fifth one just finished blooming. So that was, that one's going to die back slowly. As with everything, when it comes to the slippers, slowly is the key. Patience is a virtue. And if you know the rest, let me know in the comments. I'll give you one more hint. Keep it if you can. <laughs> Delenati. Delenati I. I look forward to seeing this one bloom. I've seen many, many blooms online. But mine hasn't. It was tiny, tiny, tiny when I got it. So this is progress. And you can hear my dog fetching in the background he's fine he's right here with me he hates getting his feet wet but you know what he could actually move the two or three steps to the left or the right so there's Delanati did I mention why I like splashing around and flushing in the summer because it's warm it's lovely I love messing with water in the summer not so much in the winter because it gets so cold so Delenati has a little sister over here that fell off when I was repotting it in my fabulous mozzarella salad bowl containers. Highly recommended in some sphagnum moss. And you know this little guy? I don't know if it's got roots. The last time I remossed it, there was nothing. It's just a stem, but it's growing a little leaf. Oh my goodness, you've got to give them credit, don't you? Look at that. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I just keep watering. I just keep the moss nice and moist. So you are done. Let me get the big one over here. This is the one from the garden center that just had no ID. It's one of those big luscious ones. It was uh, on the discount table and I thought, perfect. For practicing purposes, perfect. Okay, I'm going to lift it up. I can see you can't see diddly squat. I could do a podcast. The point of it is to see something. Oof, it's heavy. 
As you can see, all of mine are in Lekka only, except for the little struggling ones. They're in moss. And I can assure you that 90% of them are pot bound. So I flush now in the summer once, once a week, which is fun. But I do have to wait for the sun to go from this corner because normally I flush in the afternoons. Please don't ask me why, it's just become such a habit. Let's get you in. Normally I flush in the afternoon, so I, I, I can't film on the west side. And um, that's why I had to rush with my intro because the slippers that you saw earlier on, they don't like the sun. It gets too hot with them. Okay, here is Paphiopedalum Gloria Nauga. Beautiful. It struggled initially, but now it's pot bound. So when I meant struggling, I had to cut back some root, uh, some leaf tips here. Uh, one leaf died back, but other than that, it is now growing on very nicely. So there's that. And isn't it fun? I can just clean the table at the same time. You hear the background noise? Yep, I need a mobile mic. There we go, Gloria Nauga, or Nauga, all done. Spicy Reanim is an easy one. It doesn't have a mask and I can just keep pouring it over. This one I flush about two times a week now, because he's little and I want him to do well. I love the blooms on this one. So he gets a flush two times because his pot is also much smaller. He has a very much smaller reservoir. He doesn't have the same advantage of a mask. I mean, I set him into this outer pot just for aesthetic purposes. And if I'm carrying him around, then Push comes to shove, I don't go spilling things everywhere. And this one, Hung Sheng. Hung Sheng has been a bit of an issue. Problem child. So one fan is just growing, and so is some parsley, or whatever it is that it has as a companion plant. It looks like parsley to me, I know it's not, but I just don't want these guys in here. I keep pulling them out, so I don't understand. There's probably a fern trying to make its home in there. So not much going on with Hung Sheng. I'm lucky to actually have this second fan growing right here. Because otherwise, it would be history. Let's get some water in here. There we go. It's a Saturday. I was hoping for a quieter ambience. And I, but now that I've started all this, I can't believe how loud it is. All right, Paphipedalum bilatulum XL. Not much XL going on here, is there? Look at that. Okay, that's the old fan. The one that did bloom before, not with me. And then this one was attached when I got it. So it protested to some bugs. Last year, I might lose this one. It's starting another one back here, and that looks much healthier, which is a good thing. I've seen Bellatulum blooms online. They're pretty. They really are. They look so chubby and like eggs. I think they're so cute. So I don't do much chopping off the tips. And summer now, it's gonna be dry. And these guys, they live in my dining area in the summer setup on the glass shelf so they have bright bright light but no direct sun so they've had several moves from being more back pushing them further further as the angle of the sun comes up higher and higher now there is absolutely no sun where they live oh yes I just want to show you the Latinum XL part 2 which is not doing very well. This came apart in the pot. This little piece, yeah, 
I'm just leaving it in there, giving it a chance. It's green, whatever. I don't think it's going to make it. This little guy is also just a stump, but it's at least got two center pieces, center leaves trying to grow. So I'm going to keep it and see what it does. So these two should actually be together, but not under these circumstances. And finally, mint chocolate. Not only do I like mint chocolate, Give me an after eight, and I'm a happy camper. Give me the box, and I owe you for life. I also like mint chocolate ice cream. But I also like the bloom on this little mint chocolate. So I want to see it flower. And we're a long way off. Look, I have natural fertilizer, and I have a natural predator in there as well. Sorry, little spider. Don't worry, it's only temporary. You can stay. I love this foliage. And they feel so rough on the front as well. They have sort of a sandpapery texture. They're amazing. At least you can see that the plant has already flowered. So let's see what these guys do. Uh, like I said, they're not fast. But I have some orchids that are even slower than this. So in comparison, these are Speedy Gonzales. Sorry about that squeaking. And there we have it. They, actually not quite. They are gonna stay out here now, except for the little ones. The little ones are gonna go back inside. I just wanted to show them to you. Let me get the whole family picture in here. They're gonna stay out here overnight. It's nice and balmy and warm. And then tomorrow back in their place. So it's, I'm okay with spraying everybody. Get a bit of the dust off the leaves, refresh. And yeah, it's late in the afternoon, but it's a there's a beautiful breeze and the hot sun has gone on to the other side. Right, I made it. <laughs> if you made it this far, I want to thank you so much for sticking it through. It took me a lot not to crack up when I was doing the intro. It took me a lot to just go through it as if I was introducing any other plant. So I, <laughs> I hope you were in, up for a little bit of a giggle. Yes, a little bit impromptu, but um, thank you everybody so much for watching. I can finally drop my guard a little bit. I really appreciate you being here. And uh, let me know if you grow slippers and semi-hydro and how are they doing for you. Okay, enough of all that. Thank you so much. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.